like I said, we're going to talk about variability. And yesterday we talked about central tendency. And central tendency being mean, median, mode. But when I say central tendency, the word central makes you think of what? Something that is in the middle. Something that is an average. Something that is really the core of the group. And when I say core, I mean... Um, I, I don't have a better word than core. I, I don't have a great explanation, but central tendency, and we talk about the mean meaning the average value, uh, representing the average of the group, whereas median represented the middle number, and mode represented the most common. So most common, middle, and average, they're really talking about something that is central within the data set. If I had a list of values, I would be talking about that central area. You're trying to get as central as possible. Now, variability, however, on the other hand, it's not talking about the central. It's talking about the opposite, uh, in a sense, the actual spread of the data. You kind of take a little bit here, a little bit there, you shake it all around, and Throw it all together, it's like a, a ton, like making a salad right in a bowl. And I'm just saying words right now. But what basically what I'm saying here, buddy, basically what I'm saying is we've got a list of data now. I'm going to break it up into sections and look at data all around, spread out, right? You could butter and spread it on bread. You spread it out and look at the chunk of butter spread out on your bread. But now we're looking at the numbers in various places, and the way that you gather this information is, well, you gather it, and the way that you separate it out is through something called quartiles. The quartiles, all that I'm saying is if I had a whole, right, if I had a whole of anything, how many quarters are in there? Four. four. So quartiles, I'm taking my data set and breaking it into four chunks, and I'm looking at those four chunks. And that is basically what a quartile is. So before, or now that I've stated what it is, let's get into solving one of the problems here. Do -do -do, do -do -do -do. And, oh, I don't know. I'm just going to make up a bunch of numbers here. You guys ready to roll with me? I don't even know what I'm going to put down yet. Isn't that crazy? No, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do this. A bunch of random numbers. And that is a 6 at the very end. <laughs> you should have 19 numbers written down. Cool. So 19 is an odd number. So I have an odd amount of values here. So having an odd amount tells you what about finding the median. Yes, ma'am, Madison. Yeah, absolutely. I can just select the middle number. I don't have to take a collection of two numbers and find their mean. So if I have 19, let me do this. I'm going to say, okay, I got 2, 4, 6, 8, and I think 9 here. So this should actually be my median. If I've counted right, this should be 9 on the right, too. 2, 4, 6, 8 and 9. So yes, this is my middle value right here. My middle value is 4. So that tells me 4 is my median. Well, we use the term median when finding the central tendency. But right now, we're talking about variability and quartiles. So in terms of quartiles, the median of the entire set 
is considered the second quartile. Cool. So now let's move uh, to this section. Uh, if this is my tenth value right here in the middle, then I know that I have nine values. Wait, before I say that, two, four, six, eight, nine, absolutely. And that means I should have nine on this side. Two, four, six, eight, nine, absolutely. Cool. So I also have an odd amount here, an odd amount right here as well. Now, if I have a second quartile right here, you know that this value to the left, if I'm going to take the median of these values, it's going to give me what? If I've got the second quartile, there has to be a what? There definitely has to be a first. And the first quartile is going to be the median of the lower half of values. So I'm taking the median of the lower half here. So I'm going to count 2, 4. This should be my value right here. 2, 4 on the other side. Perfect. So the median here is going to be a 3. 3 is my first quartile. And that means that over here to the right, I go, okay, 2, 4, and 5 right here, 5 is going to be, if I have a first and second quartile, I've got to have a third. So this 5 in the middle, the median of this upper half is 5, and that's considered the third quartile. Cool, so I got a first, second, and third quartile, but in dealing with these values, let me see here, do 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 I forgot to write quartile, so I'll write it out. But I'm just going to stop here. Fourth quart. So third quart. So now um, that I have my three quartiles, um, first, second, and third, I'm also going to select or circle the lowest digit and the highest digit value or values in my data set, which are two and six is the largest and smallest value. Well, once you get here, what you want to see this in there. But once you get here, the next step is to say, okay, well, I've got my my list separated out in the quartiles, but let's actually visualize it on the graph. Um, Cool stuff. Awesome. So from here, what you're going to do, the first thing is put, hey, how many numbers do I have selected up here, guys? One, two, three, four, and five values. So if I've got five values selected, what I'm going to do is take uh, my pencil, and I'm going to put five different dots along here. The first one's going to go exactly in the middle of the number line. And I'm going to put five other dots along here, separating them out, trying to keep them at least uh, just give them some space uh, for now. All I'm going to talk about now is just giving them some space. But that first dot, where's the first dot go? Okay, it goes exactly in the middle. And if these five dots represent the five selected values up here, what do you think this middle dot represents? Which is the median, but for quartiles it is the second quartile. So I'm going to say, okay, we're going to put a big line right here. It's going up and down, a real big one, guys. It's going to be important to use later. And I'm going to call that 4. And I'll say, hey, that's the second quartile. And, uh-oh, went too far down. Second quartile. 
Cool. So now I also know if this is the median, if it's the second quartile, then I know the value that goes here is going to be considered what, guys? It's the first, and its value is 3. Okay, so I have my first, my second. Well, what value is this going to be right here? So now I'm my third. I'm, remember, I'm putting big lines on those dots right there. Cool. So now from this point, I am creating a specific type of uh, chart right here. And I'm calling this a box and whisker plot. Cool. So now to finish my box, because I've created three big lines, all I'm going to do is put a line across the top, put a line across the bottom, and hey, I've got my box created. But there's a second word in this title. What am I missing? I'm missing my whiskers. So let's create some whiskers. The first set of whiskers is going to create the outside box from the first quartile to, hey, what do you think the dot it's connecting to is? It's the what value? The smallest value. And also, we'll just do smallest. And then this other set of whiskers, it's moving out to the what? Largest, the highest, and that value is 6. Largest or highest. Cool. So now your box and whisker plot is completed. Cool stuff. So guys, let's stop from here.